So the first episode in this season starts with an expletive. Do you think that that is indicative of how the season is going to go for Leonardo? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, to a certain extent. I mean, I mean um, it starts off with a bang, and it's kind of just complete mayhem from start to finish. It also takes place with in a really compressed timeline, a much more compressed timeline than the other seasons. Mm -hmm. So it all unravels over the course of a month or six weeks, something like that. It's really, it's that compressed? Wow. Yeah. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the different losses that he experienced and how that kind of shapes the way the season's going to go? If you don't know how much you're allowed to talk uh, um, <laughs> There are a lot of losses. Uh, we've never been shy about killing off characters. And, um, geez, I'm not even sure how many we killed in this season. Uh, uh, quite a few cast members will be dropping like flies. Good. A lot of loss. <laughs> Um, so, when you approach writing an episode for Da Vinci's Demons, do you have to do a lot of research on Leonardo and the Medici or any of the aspects, or does a lot of it come naturally to you after working on the show for three seasons? Uh, I, well, after, by the third season, a lot of it comes naturally because mm -hmm. there was, you know, the most amount of research was done in the first season, and uh, myself and the beginning writers, we really immersed ourselves in the timeline, and there were a lot of things that we were hoping to get to if we had done other seasons, and so, the Siege of Otranto, which this season is sort of loosely based on, was an event, a real historical event in which the Ottoman Empire invaded Italy. Uh, it was something that we were hoping to get to. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, we, we went back. There are a lot of first-person accounts of this siege, so that was kind of fun to delve into that. But we didn't need to do as much research this time. Cool. Very cool. In bringing the Ottomans in, was that challenging then when you're dealing with just uh, European or Caucasian European characters? <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, you know, well, it wasn't as challenging as season two when we needed a lot of Peruvian yeah, yeah. extras and Peruvian <laughs> actors uh, in London or in Wales, uh, much less. Um, we had a really hard time getting Peruvian extras. And, um, you know, it wasn't as difficult, but, but it was somewhat challenging. We had hoped uh, this season to actually film in Istanbul for a couple of weeks but um, we ended up only doing some plate photography. Wow. What's it like for you personally working on Da Vinci and the, the episodes that you write as opposed to the long form narrative that you do when you work on like a movie? Can you talk a little bit about the ways the episodes kind of develop, how much you're involved with that? Well, I mean, I'm involved with them a lot. I mean, I, I think one of the craziest things about working on a TV show is that you're, you know, with a movie, each phase is its own discrete process, but with a television show, you're working on the story for one episode and you're shooting another episode and you're editing another episode and you're color timing and doing the sound mix on another episode so that all of this stuff is happening at once and you know there's also a feedback loop in television that you don't typically have in movies because you air something uh, and and then the fans talk about it and sometimes you course correct in between seasons based on you know, this character really popped, or, you know, sometimes um, fans, viewers have, you know, an is interesting point of view on something, and so you think, oh, maybe we should lean into that. That doesn't really happen on movies because the movie's finished. Right. And there's, you know, typically not time for uh, the audience to respond to that. Is there course correcting in this season? Was there? <laughs> well, there wasn't course correcting in this season because we finished it all, but there were definitely a couple of things that uh, we decided to change based on, you know, in a, in, a, in a good way, just the way that the audience received certain things in season two. Cool. What is your favorite Da Vinci invention that you want to get into the show? <clears throat> that I have gotten or did not That you, that you, are, are, you are looking forward to getting into the show. <laughs> uh, this season. <laughs> yeah. Or in coming seasons. <laughs> um, well, we always wanted to get the tank in. Yeah, yeah. And it just seemed kind of ridiculous to put it in the first season. It, it, so the tank figures very prominently. Um, we don't quite have as many inventions in this season as we have in prior seasons. The tank is a really big one. Um, there's a really cool invention that is created uh, at the end of episode eight that figures prominently in the last two episodes. It's 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 like a Leonardo da Vinci doomsday device. <laughs> it's much more it's much more a comic book kind of thing. He didn't really build this one, 
but it feels like something that like Reed Richards would have done if he had been alive during Da Vinci's time. Oh, I love that. That's such a great pitch. Yeah. <laughs> so other than uh, this specific invention, what are the things that you want people to really pay attention to? Are there Easter eggs that they should look out for when they approach this season? Um, well, this season we're going to be bringing back a kind of fan favorite character from the first season in a very unexpected way. Um, Jeez, that's a hard question. No pressure. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know. I got, a, I got a version of this in London. Someone asked about Easter eggs and things like that. And we always pack tons of Easter eggs into the show. But of course, I can never remember them in moments like this. Right, and I'm just asking you to do my job for me and tell yeah, me where they are. <laughs> exactly, exactly. They, they are there, uh, but um, they vaporized right now in my mind. <laughs> and you do pull a lot of really great well-known genre actors into Da Vinci's Demons. Is that intentional to try and bring the nerds along? Or is that just because they're amazing actors like Alexander Siddig, Laura Pulver, Tom, the lead? Like, they've all done a lot of really cool genre stuff outside of this show. Um, I mean, first and foremost, it's because they're amazing actors. But in the case of Laura and Alexander in particular, mm -hmm. uh, I was fans of them and it specifically asked about them during the casting process. Um, I just adore those two in particular. Um, Alexander Siddick, I really, really love. I mean, I would have put him in every single episode if I could have. <laughs> Star Trek fans would have loved that. Yeah. Uh, and I don't want to take up too much of your time, so in three words or less, sum up the season of Da Vinci's Demons. Loss, mayhem, and redemption. <laughs>